Art is the soul personified. It is the physical depiction of the human experience put on display. In whatever form it may take, art has been known to sway emotions and conjure reactions. Often, when art is done honestly, it gives us a look into the mind and heart of the artist. Art is not always about beauty. A truly great artist can evoke all sorts of emotions, even feelings of fear and unease. But we must ask ourselves, is it the art form that frightens me? Or does the image remind me of the hidden parts of my consciousness that are truly terrifying? There are several paintings through the course of history that have created feelings of unease in those that gaze upon them. They have been labeled as haunted or cursed. Witnesses will swear that the paintings are possessed by spirits, that the story behind the image is so disturbing, the images displayed cannot rest. Paintings that display such agony and pain that they are destined to project the spirit of the crippling stories from owner to owner. Here are five of the most haunted paintings to have existed. Pogo the Clown John Wayne Gacy was a monster by all accounts. Born in Chicago on March 17, 1964, he had a fairly normal childhood in a blue-collar home, but at the age of 26, he was convicted of assaulting a teenage boy and thus sentenced to prison for the first time. It was all downhill from there. He was diagnosed with multiple mental disorders and proceeded to kidnap and sexually assault at least 33 boys before finally being sent to death row. During his 14 years on death row, Gacy made several oil paintings and among them was proclaimed self-portrait, Pogo the Clown. He often dressed like a clown and performed at children's parties. Gacy was executed using lethal injection in 1994 and the painting has exchanged hands over the years. The singer, Nicky Stone, acquired the painting in 2001 for $3,000. The painting was to be kept at her friend's home. Shortly after the arrival of the painting, her friend's neighbor died in the car accident. Another one of Stone's friends offered to hold on to the painting, but later committed suicide after claiming that the painting was staring at him and haunting him. Paintings by Gacy have sparked some controversy as to whether or not they should be displayed to the public or not. People are often creeped out when they encounter Pogo the Clown, barely able to look upon him for more than a few seconds. The Anguished Man Our next story starts in North England. The grandmother of a man named Sean Robinson had a very interesting painting in her possession nearly 30 years ago. The painting resembled a man with his mouth gaping wide open and his eye sockets hollow and empty. His complexion was a burnt orange as if he was burning alive. As the painting sat deep in her attic, the grandmother claimed to have seen a figure of a man wandering about her home at night. She would hear moans of agony and crying during the night. It turns out the grandmother knew a secret or two about the painting. Stories have been told that the unknown artist committed suicide soon after he completed the painting and he had mixed in his blood with the paint. Dear old grandma was sure the painting was evil. After his grandmother passed on, Sean inherited the painting and the same strange occurrences were now happening in his home. Sean and his family would hear crying coming from the far corner of the bedroom and they would often see a middle-aged man at the foot of the bed staring up at them. The paranormal activity increased all around them. People would fall down the stairs and items would fall with no reason at all. Sean continued to own the painting and has contacted paranormal experts to investigate the reason behind the haunting of the anguished man. The Hands Resist Him In 1972, artist Bill Stoneham painted a picture of his younger self and a large doll standing stoically in front of a shop window. Stoneham explained his painting in form of symbolism. The shop window was to represent the gateway between real life and the fantasy world. The doll symbolizes a guide for the five-year-old Stoneham between the two worlds. 
Since its inception, the painting had passed from gallery to owners, leaving a trail of death once the painting sold. One of its more notable owners was the actor John Marley from the Godfather films. John died in 1984 from complications with heart surgery. Along with the gallery owner, Charles Van Garten, and an art critic, Henry Seldes, that were all in attendance of the painting while it was at the gallery. It was not until February 2000 that the painting was put up for sale on eBay with the claim that it was cursed and haunted. Amazingly enough, the eBay ad had an accompanying video clip of a young boy crawling out of the painting. It is said that when the haunting begins, the doll is carrying a gun rather than a battery cell and is forcing the young boy out of the painting to wreak havoc and evil in the world. There are incidents from those who have gazed at the original painting of screaming and fainting. The painting went on to sell for over $1,000 on eBay. Stoham was astounded when he heard of the paranormal fame his painting had acquired. That was until he recalled that the gallery only he sold the painting to and the art critic had both died within one year of coming in contact with the painting. I wonder. Is there more about the painting that Stoneham isn't telling us? The Dead Mother You might have heard of the popular 1800s painting, The Scream, by Edward Munch. Munch has another masterpiece that is just as compelling. To understand this piece of artwork, we must first understand a little about Munch and his past. While still young, the majority of his family died as a result of the tuberculosis endemic. Tragically, his father led him to believe that all death was due to the sins of young Edward. Munch was never able to completely shake off the feelings of grief intertwined with guilt. As an adult, he painted the dead mother as a reflection of a time he suffered in miserable loss. The girl in the picture with her mother's fading body in the background seems to be pleading through her eyes, yearning for an escape from the horrors that are her reality. Viewers believe that it's Edward Munch's anguish that transferred onto the painting and brought it to life. Those who have owned the painting in the past says that the girl's eyes follows them as they move and the sounds can be heard emitting from the painting if you stand close enough. There are claims that the dead mother would rise and come up from the bed something from the world of the undead. It is also said that the young girl would at times vanish from the painting altogether. Although there are no reports of people being targeted as subjects of the painting's haunting, there is no need. Anyone who has experienced loss knows it's a unique type of haunting that never really leaves you. Untitled Paintings our last and final artist is Zizisław Pazinski. He had a highly successful career and explored many art forms, not limited to photography, painting, sculpting, and graphic art. Pazinski chose not to name any of his art pieces to avoid any misinterpretations of his work. He was born in Sanek, Poland in 1929, but didn't become widely popular until the 1960s. His mystic abstract works would transport the viewer into a dreamlike universe, or better yet, a hauntingly beautiful nightmare. The artwork that we will be referring to today can only be described as a collection of human skeletons and faces, swirling and fading into a torpedo trapped in the room. The unfortunate incidents associated with this painting have confirmed its place in cursed and haunted paintings. Byshinsky lived a fairly uneventful life, but towards the end, he was befallen by tragedies from all directions. His wife died of cancer in 1998, followed by his only son committing suicide a year later. A few years after that, Byshinsky was stabbed to death by his housekeeper's son for refusing to lend him money. Though technically there hasn't been any accounts of hauntings or misfortunes coming from the painting, it has been said that looking at the original paintings for an extended period of time can be emotionally draining. 
It seems Bashinsky may have transferred some of his sorrows onto the painting for us to feel and look into the minds of the Polish painter. Bashinsky's paintings can be seen at the Royal Castle in Senek, Poland. It is said a painting is a window to the artist's soul. What if the artist is a tortured soul? And what if that soul has been invaded by a disturbed entity? What then? A haunted painting is not so far-fetched when we consider the level of emotions that certain art pieces can evoke. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, history has proven that the power of art can change people. So why shouldn't it change even supernatural entities? Do you think any of these paintings are truly haunted? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our late night top 5 video. We're a new channel and would love to have your support by subscribing, liking, or simply dropping a comment down below. To watch more interesting late night videos, click the links to continue watching more.